This is Julia Whittup with Talk Story Media, and I have with me today Lisa Bar Barnett. 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 I'm sorry. And she is going to be talking to us about the Akashic Record, right? That's right. right. Okay. Well, tell us more. Um, I'm not even sure exactly what that is. So could you tell us what the Akashic Records are and what you can do? Absolutely. Yes, I would love to. So the Akashic Records are the recording of your soul's journey throughout time. So what that means is that from the moment you individuate from source, which since there's no time and space, hard to say how many billions of years ago that was, but it's a long time ago because we're really ancient souls. And so everything you do, every place, plane, dimension you live on, everything your soul experiences is recorded in this energetic field called the Akash or Akasha. And that word is a Sanskrit word and it translates to ether or sky. And so um, basically the idea is, is that your soul, the journey your soul has been on is recorded in the etheric field of source. And the way I see it is that that gives you your whole, uh, it gives you your own library, right? Because each and everything you do, every place you live, if you imagine that every lifetime was a book, and so you have a library of hundreds and thousands of books that are the story of you, what you've done, your gifts and talents, where you've lived, kind of the star seed dimensions or planets you may be from, lifetimes in which you were a shaman or a healer. Um, all of that is written in your Akashic record. Wow. Forever, for all time. For, for all time, right? Wow. So past, present, probable future is all written. But of course, because there is no time really um we can actually go into our past lives and heal them to clear trauma from this present life wow. so it's also a profound healing tool wow that does sound good so you could find out what caused the trauma in the first place and heal it correct Right. So, you know, very often and and I'd love to hear a little bit more um, about your perspective in that way as a shaman, but say a client comes to me and they're having maybe um, a, a challenge because they had a traumatic childhood. One of their parents was emotionally abusive. The other one was an alcoholic. They have a really hard time feeling happy or good about themselves. They feel like they'd like to share some of the wisdom that they've gotten from this, you know, challenging childhood. Yeah. But they're also afraid to speak up, right? Because they're afraid, um, you know, because of the, the abusive parents and, and different people in their lives, they're afraid to speak out. And so it's interesting because in the Akashic records, you can go into the energy of the childhood and then and do energetic healing and clearing of emotional pain and trauma. And then we can also ask our Akashic record keepers, the, the specific beings of light who keep your Akashic record, um, to, to, we can ask them, are there other past lives where this soul has had a similar experience? So it's kind of trauma upon trauma very often. It's not just a, a singular life trauma. Uh huh. Okay. So you might be working on several traumas. Right, right. And often we'll also call it a karmic pattern. And what that would mean in the Akashic records to the record keepers, karma is more about um, learning and growing as a soul. It's not because you've been bad, you're being punished. It's about yeah. your soul growth. Right. So you can understand. So you say, 
Yeah. So I want to learn about, you know, um, standing in my power. I want to learn about speaking my truth. I want to learn about forgiveness. And because these are some of the things the soul wants to learn about in a specific life, you choose parents who are going to help you learn that lesson. Somebody, maybe you do a lot of forgiveness work around the parent who um, has alcoholism mm -hmm. because they're, they're absent and, and, you know, you're left alone a lot as a child, or, you know, then you have this emotionally abusive parent, or um, maybe you only have a single parent who's the alcoholic. And so we, we set the stage, we plan our life to learn and grow as a soul. Okay. Okay. So we kind of know what's going to happen before we come. Yeah, we plan it. <laughs> oh, but we don't remember right? that. So it's, and we don't remember that. So that's kind of the conundrum, right? That's a lot of our challenges is um, what did I plan? What did I want to learn about? Right? So those are the challenges. And also, what gifts and talents did I want to share with humanity? So we've had many, many, many hundreds of lives here on earth alone. And so we have many gifts and talents, that may, whether it's being um, some sort of a healer or um, like a shaman or an acupuncturist or a hands-on healer or, you know, different types and varieties of healing. Um, and often we've come to, to share some wisdom Sometimes we've come to write a book about it, or sometimes we've come to um, work on our relationships. And sometimes we become therapists or relationship coaches because we've learned so much over a dozen different lifetimes that we're like, I'm ready to share the wisdom I've learned in the last, you know, 20 lives or something. <laughs> well, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, why? Well, I guess I do understand why we can't remember. It'd be pretty hard to keep up with this life if you could remember all of them. Oh my gosh! Uh, right? <laughs> yeah. It could be confusing, and 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 part of what the record keepers also say is that because we want to learn, um, it would be. It, harder to be kind of in a space of, of beginner's mind, say, or learning, if we could remember hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of lifetimes, it would be like, but I've learned that before, or I've kind of learned that before, or I've had <laughs> that experience, but maybe I didn't learn it. What's wrong with me? Now am I, am I stupid? You know, <laughs> it would just, yeah. it would be a mess. I can see that. It would be bad. Okay. It'd be handy sometimes, though. <laughs> well, and that is one of the gifts of the Akashic Records, because when you can actually open your Akashic Records and go into this library and start, you know, reading the books, uh -huh. that you can start asking questions of your record keepers about these lifetimes. And you can um, kind of, uh, I would say, feel into some people see like they're clairvoyant, like a movie. So they may see kind of a movie of their life and be able to experience some of what they've done and learned in other lifetimes. Uh -huh. um, sometimes we receive the information kind of as a more clear cognizant, kind of like a knowingness Oh, like, oh, I I get it. I know I was that. Mm -hmm. I know I have that gift. And it, um, it just helps us to validate ourselves, to understand that we are very ancient and wise souls. And then, of course, to be able to move on in that way. So we can say, oh, okay, I, I can, um, I've done it before. I can do it again, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, do you treat people in groups or do you always do individuals? I, I do both. Um, I have actually a healing um, membership program where I just do like a two hour group healing um, just once a month uh, for, for everybody who belongs to my membership. And, and it's just a lovely um, 
thing to do. And, and whenever I do group healings, and sometimes I'll do them with, um, you know, uh, re recorded ones and during interviews or whatever, because um, different group energies will show up. And it's quite profound to do group healing, really. It allows us to clear some big group contracts and wow. uh, even collective beliefs when we do that kind of work as a group. Wow. Okay. That's interesting. So yeah, maybe you could do something for Shaman's camp. Even if Absolutely. you had to do it by zoom, it would still be nice to have that. We'll talk later. Yeah, absolutely. That would, that would be fun. That, yeah. We'll have to talk more about that because, um, yep. It's, it's great because so many of us, you know, especially when we come together in a group like shaman's camp or, um, kind of a group with a, with a kind of a group soul contract or collective purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, that's often when all sorts of different blocks and challenges will show up. And then we can do that clearing for the group, right? Like our fear of speaking our truth and, and our fear of sharing our wisdom, our fear of getting out into the world in a bigger way. And often when we say, you know, I'm a shaman, I want to share my gifts it will trigger a lot of those other lifetimes where maybe we died for, for sharing our gifts or, you know, we, somebody killed us for, um, for the work that we were doing in the world. So it can be very, very profound to do group healing in that way. Very cool. Very cool. Let's <laughs> see what you were going to talk to us about how to live a life center, a heart centered life too. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things the Akashic Record Keepers um, often talk about is really living in your heart. And the reason that it's so important is because this is how we awaken, right? We can't awaken when we're living in our ego or our personality or when that's always what's running our life. Mm -hmm. And again, the Record Keepers talk about um, compassion and forgiveness being a path to awakening. And I would, I would say that um, most of the people who are on a spiritual path, most of the healers, the people who are shaman or, or do this sort of work or psychics, whatever kind of modality you use, I would say that most of us would desire in general to awaken, right? To become um, wiser. And so what the record keeper suggests is one of the great ways, of course, there's a, a variety of ways to live more deeply in your heart, but um, often just kind of simply numerous times during the day, especially when we get kind of frustrated or upset or stressed, that's all mental energy, right? That's all kind of that mental, um, the ego is freaking out, right? Our personality is freaking out. We're worried about things. So when we can just take a couple of nice, deep cleansing breaths and energetically drop down into our heart chakra, into our heart space, and just, we can feel that. Like, um, I like to look at it like that little ball of energy that is really uh, the compressed vibration of you in your pineal gland, just dropping bang, just like a little ball rolling down a tube into your heart chakra. And then I see it open and expand. And we just feel into that energy of the heart and of love, just pure, unconditional love. And as we feel that, the head quiets down, right? And we feel much greater compassion for all of those around us. And we move into a, a, a space that's outside of time in our heart. Our heart is outside of time in a way. So yeah. when we're there, we're able to live in that, that kind of space of being, right? Instead of doing everything. And so it's a great simple practice to just move from your head into your heart. Um, a lot of people like will set their, their little, you know, watch to just beep, you know, every hour or every two hours, whatever works for you. 
is a little reminder like, oh yeah, just, you know, do some nice deep breaths. Be in the present, be in the now. Be in the now moment, right? And of course, being in the now moment is like, okay, how do we do that? So these are great, simple um, tools Mm -hmm. to actually do that, to bring ourselves into that space. But also learning to access your own Akashic records is a phenomenal tool because what it's doing is it's raising our vibration from whatever that energy we're in and living in at the moment. You know, and if you're shaman and and you're healers, um, most of us have moved into, you know, say, a, a vibration of 300 or 400 or even 500, which is love. Of. And when we can live in that space, that again is, is on the way to awakening. Dr. David Hawkins, if you've ever read Power Versus Force or followed David Hawkins at, at all, he no. had an energetic vibrational scale. Oh, so it's okay. kind of an interesting thing in that way. Um, That's where you got that number, people- 500. Yeah, yeah, most of there's quite a few different scales. If you Google kind of vibrational scale, um, Esther Hicks and and Abraham channeled one, Dr. Um, David Hawkins uh, has a whole scale. He really wrote the book on kind of that energy. Um, And so it's, you know, people talk about vibration, and then most of us don't have any idea even what that means. And so um, the energy of humanity and the energy of anger and frustration and hatred and jealousy and blame and guilt and shame, all of those vibrations are very, very low. They're down uh, 20, 30, 40, 50 on a scale of zero to a thousand. Yeah. So most of humanity has lived in a scale of under 200 for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. So this is what we're trying to do right now in the his, in history is move into higher vibrations, move up into love up to 500 or on uh, awakening the, the um, according to David scale starts at 700. <coughs> so 700 to a thousand is the process of awakening. It's not a, it's still not a destination, which I think mm-hmm. is always good for us to realize. Yeah. Yeah, that is. It's in process. And opening your records moves you into the vibration of 500 or above. And the longer we stay in our records, we're in pure source energy in the Akashic field. It's pure. um, It's it's in the field of the quantum field, source field, um, Akashic field are all part of the energy of the quantum field and source. So right there, by learning to open your own Akashic records, get information, do your own healing, learn to um, see the world from this very big, expansive place, you're immediately really moving into this higher energy of love. And that's one of the things I think most of my um, clients will notice right away when I do a reading for them and I open their records, they feel that energy of pure, unconditional divine love really encircle them because that's the vibration of your Akashic records and source. So it's another very profound way to raise your vibration to, um, you know, move and and live in your heart and come to understand who you are. You can understand your soul's plan by accessing some of this information in the Akashic records. Well, this is fascinating and we're looking forward to having you at Shaman's Camp and maybe actually doing a group healing with you. So thanks for being on the show today. And I'm going to sign off for the show.